come to you on, on an issue that I've approached numerous times. Only this time it's a little bit more dramatic, so say. Where the ISO evaluation that we're going to be facing come July, mid July. Um, we had our time limit moved up by approximately seven, eight months, which we're going to be extremely undergun as far as the evaluation goes, time constraints to get a lot of projects done. That's what we're going to be evaluated on. That coupled with the enormous growth and calls that we're receiving from Mercy Calls for Service, and over the last couple of years, we had approximately seven calls that went unanswered at night while we don't have any staffing on. The last one was this past Monday morning. Um, and it's getting to be a larger and larger concern to the department that during these unstaffed times, that more and more instances like this is going to occur where we don't have anyone to respond because we're at night depending on the volunteer or depending on someone to be available to respond that's not on duty. So I'd like to stop you right there, Chief. I'd like to comment on the uh, Monday morning. Yes. Uh, there was a uh, medical call. Our EMTs were out of town, which is getting to be a very big habit here. And we had a six month old baby that had died because they could not get anybody to respond. Uh, they lived out on Union Road. And uh, what it is, the EMTs did respond, but they had to come from uh, another part of the county. And that would have been a great help if we'd have had someone on call because 90% if not more of all of our firefighters are EMT certified. So we could have went out and maybe helped. And I just want to bring that up and keep going. It's becoming more and more complex and it's just becoming a great concern that we don't deal with now as the calls continue to grow year after year after year as the population is growing. If we don't get ahead of it, this book going to become a larger issue, which is already a large issue, but it's going to become even larger. But to give you a breakdown, I think the city manager could email you kind of our capa staffing capabilities at this time. Paper copies at your places as well. Exactly. The way our current staffing is currently organized we have two firefighters on duty from eight to five, seven days a week. Myself, I'm one of those two firefighters during the weekday. Then on the weekends, we have two part-time staff from eight to five. Then after five o'clock to eight in the morning, it's kind of, it's up in the air if anyone's going to be able to respond. Large majority of the time, 99% of the time we do, but it's that 1% that we don't. But what I'm proposing is the additional, small amount of additional funding to go ahead and utilize the part-time staff I have in place now, which will save money because we're gonna hire full-time pay all the benefits with it, to start rotating them on 24-hour shifts. And it only costs an additional 32,000 a year to go ahead and make that happen. So that's basically, and that way we'll have 24-hour coverage. And we'll still have two firefighters on duty on Saturdays and Sundays, and I still will remain the second staff on duty Monday through Friday. When I'm not here, unless I'm not here on vacation or training or meetings or such things as that. Chief, Chief how many volunteers do we have on staff now? Um, we have absolutely none. We haven't had, we've had, probably last year we had two, but we have since terminated them because they didn't make it to any training or any meetings during that time frame, and they were just a liability. From the standpoint, they never have come to any training, never participated, and the only reason I terminated them at that time is a liability. If they did happen to come to a call and get hurt, I don't have anything to back up that they've had any training so whatsoever. So I had to eliminate that liability from the city. So we have no volunteers. And it's not just a local problem. I mean, within Lamps County, within all the other areas, you have a problem retaining or getting volunteers in because it takes so much to time from that particular family to go to training, so. Well, 
I know this is not the first time that you've spoken this issue uh, with us, especially for staffing and for have, you know uh, <clears throat> being able to have more training and, and all that type of stuff. And I've always told every department whether we can afford it or not. Always present it to the council and lay it at the council where the council is rest where, where it rests with the council. And uh, you've done this, so I mean. Whether we act on it or not, you always presented that from day one. That I do need this staff, and I do need this equipment, I do need this, and that puts us on notice. And I try to come about it in a reasonable manner because I know the city can not right now afford to come up and request three full time firefighters today. Because then you got to look at all the benefits, you know, an additional probably thirty to fifty thousand dollars. <coughs> on top of that requesting just to get full time. So I'm trying to look at it in a, in a reasonable way, but still meet the needs that we need. So you're saying with the, with the resources that you're asking for, that uh, there would be no increase in numbers of staff, correct? They, they may be an increase in numbers, which it will not impact the overall budget. Because all I have is part-time staff. Right. And whether I have five part-time staff or 30, it's not going to increase. So you're saying you would increase you, uh, another part-time person? You would I add one more part-time? I may have to hire five or six more part-time, but I only have so many slots per day that they're going. I use it as a pool. Right. So if I have five or 20, I'm only going to pull two people out for this particular day. So the number really doesn't, it's not going to impact how much funding we use. Because I'm only looking to fund, um, like I said, the 24-hour rotation, which is adding, because they're currently working nine-hour shifts. Mm -hmm. And one of those, I'm looking to increase it 24 hours around the clock, so they're rotating out. So I look at it as a dot, and I need so many dots to fill <laughs> within that calendar. Mm -hmm. So there's a, the additional personnel that you talked about, the, the additional part-time personnel that, you're, that you may need to bring on. You mentioned it may be four or five. Yeah, I'll probably bring four or five more. But it's not will, they, five. will they be, uh, will we have to train them from scratch? No. Um, Which would, of course would be an expense and we're going to have to look at them. No, 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 no. I mean, each person requires some type of training. We try to do as much in-house or the house in the bank. But smaller departments we are trying to utilize bring all the people from that already work in the hospital, Dallas County, other pay departments that already have qualifications, qualifications and training. So we don't have to embrace that cost. And we already, and some of our part-time help currently work all, all part-time or full-time at other departments all in, the, in the South Georgia area, is that correct? That's correct. Which all my part-time staff currently are either lieutenant service with the Dallas Fire Department or the Dallas County Fire Department. So we kind of use each other to narrow that cost down. And really, I benefit from that. And that's where you say you'll get this additional staffing in? That's the question. Other departments are in? Yes. So I really couldn't hire anyone straight off the street and train them because no larger than our department is. To give you an example, if I hired someone with no experience right now, in most fire departments is the case, it would take that person four to five years to gain the knowledge and experience where they can go out and call by themselves. So to hire someone green, so to speak, I can't do it. So I have to hire people that's already trained and certified and have their understanding of what their mission is. Is it safer brand still out or are they yeah. closed? It is. Um, they have probably cut it in half. It will open normally in December. So we, this December before it comes back up, and it's going to stay open for 30 days. And then after it closes, it'll probably take about eight to 10 months before it gets closed. So if we put in for a safe ground, it's going to come up in December, it'll probably be following December before we find out. And then we're looking at one in 1,000 chances of getting it. Which, after sitting on numerous payment grant review panels in DC, it's it's not, it's not quite as um, risky as wet water, but some of it. Are there, do you know, 
when they're available, part-time people, firemen, experienced firemen that you know are available and trained and willing to come work with us on a part-time basis? Um, that is correct. To avoid sending looking to go for or looking my car for the course of sleep, I already have five people already lined up.
that says that even though there's alternative coverage, but, but you add the extra time it takes for that alternative coverage, well, we've got great equipment, and we're about to add to that equipment to our city. Um, it can save property and it can save lives. So a $32,000 increase. My chief, uh, in trying to make everything work, says that you can't make it work. Um, I'm going to have to say that, that, that we need that. I'm, 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 I'm all for supporting uh, our allotting the proper financing and resources to the next